It was summer 2009, and we were about 8,000 feet up in the central Afghan mountains, just two hours south of Kabul. I could see the infrared laser from the aerial drone tracking the movement of eight fighters who ran out of the target compound when we arrived. Our team tore off after them as soon as the helicopter's ramp hit the ground. Alpha Team has visual on squirters was all I heard our team leader Phil say over the radio. The fighters were heading for a ridge line 300 meters north of the compound. Our team was trying to cut them off while the rest of the troop assaulted the compound. As we closed in on their position, I looked back to see Phil and the rest of the team close behind. It was our first mission on this deployment and we were still getting used to the altitude. Seeing the rest of the team moving into position, I snapped back around and shouldered my rifle. The enemy fighters were setting up a fighting position roughly 150 yards away. I could barely keep my laser steady after the 500 meter run in all of my gear, but I managed to lock onto the fighter with a PKM machine gun. Squeezing off multiple rounds, I watched him fall. By then, my teammates arrived and opened fire, dropping two more fighters before the rest disappeared over the ridgeline and out of our sight. Leaving their dead behind, the remaining fighters raced down the backside of the ridge. We have five hotspots moving to the north towards several compounds, I heard the drone pilot say in my radio. I could see the laser from the drone moving down the backside of the hill. Phil gave the team a nod, and we were off on another dead sprint to close the distance. As we reached the top of the ridgeline, we slowed down, careful not to rush into a hasty ambush. I saw three bodies lying there, one with a machine gun and one with an RPG. We were lucky to take out their two biggest guns in the first seconds of the fight. The dead fighters were dressed in baggy shirts and pants, and black cheetahs, high top puma-like sneakers worn by Taliban fighters. It was a running joke in the squadron that if you wore black cheetahs in Afghanistan, you were automatically suspect. I've never seen anyone other than Taliban fighters in those sneakers. From the ridgeline, we could see the surviving fighters tearing down the backside of the hill. Phil quickly snatched the RPG lying next to one of the dead fighters and fired it at the group as they ran off. The rocket landed nearby their position and the shrapnel peppered the fighters as they ran. Dropping the launcher, he turned to me. Over the radio, we were getting calls about close air support, or CAS. An AC-130 gunship was circling above us. CAS is coming on station, Phil literally screamed at me from just two feet away. The RPG had knocked out his hearing. I can hear you, I said. Stop screaming. For the rest of the night, I could hear Phil before I saw him. Every word out of his mouth came in a scream. We watched from the ridgeline as the AC-130's 20mm cannon pounded the fighters. Sending the combat assault dog, which Phil had nicknamed the Hair Missile, ahead. We spent the rest of the night chasing down the remaining fighters. All of them were either mortally wounded or dead. Phil and another assaulter chased a fighter into one of the compounds, while the rest of us started to clear a field of waist-deep grass. The AC-130 was reporting more hotspots. We launched the hair missile and he locked on to the scent of a fighter about 50 feet to my right. I could hear the fighter start screaming as the dog attacked. Calling the dog off, the assaulters quickly threw hand grenades into the ditch where the fighter waited to ambush us. As they moved up to clear the ditch, I started to move forward. Even under my night vision goggles, it was difficult to see. The grass was thick and hard to walk through. Behind me, I could hear intermittent gunfire, as Phil and another assaulter were in a firefight with a barricaded shooter in one of the compounds. My gun was up, and I tried to use my laser to illuminate a path through the grass. I could see burnt patches ahead of me where 20mm shells had hit. I saw a dark shadow at my feet underneath my night vision goggles. I lifted my foot to step on it, assuming it was a log or a branch. When I heard a man gasp, I jumped back and opened fire. It scared the crap out of me. Taking a second to confirm I didn't actually crap myself, I got my nerves under control. I moved up to search the body. 
He must have been dead before I got there. The weight of my foot on his chest forced the air out of his lungs. The body was singed from the 20 millimeter rounds. After a quick search, I found an AK-47 and a chest rack. Back in Jalalabad, we posed for some pictures after the mission. Phil was wearing a black Under Armour skull cap and had the RPG draped over his shoulder. The picture would be a reminder of the time he cut down the enemy with their own RPG and blew out his hearing. It was a good night's work and a great start to a lively deployment. That night we killed more than 10 fighters and suffered no casualties. As usual, it was a combination of skill and luck. Without a doubt, the shooter in the ditch would have ambushed us, which proved the value of the combat assault dog. A bit of a shorter story for you guys today than normal, but this story is coming from the book No Easy Day, written by DevGrew operator Matt Bissonette under the pen name Mark Owen. I've covered multiple DevGrew combat operations in other videos on the channel from the book No Easy Day, and it looks like from those videos, a lot of you guys have actually ended up buying this book, which I think is absolutely incredible and is honestly the goal of these videos. Matt Bissonette is an American hero and his book No Easy Day is an incredible book and you can get a lot of value out of reading it. And I wanna support him and his book in any way I can. So it's awesome to see that a lot of you guys have decided to buy the book. As per usual with these videos, I will have the link to his book on Amazon down in the description below it would be absolutely amazing if we managed to like sell the book out on amazon at least the hard covers out on amazon that would be insane so if you guys have not bought this book yet it's not very expensive and it is 100 percent worth the read and plus you'd be supporting an american hero so if you haven't read it go to the link in the description and check it out but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy it make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel we're on our way to a hundred thousand subscribers and i appreciate every single one of you guys and all your support but if you didn't enjoy this video for any reason at all please feel free to hit that dislike button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what i can do to improve my future videos any and all feedback is greatly appreciated here on the channel but hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you all in the next video